Good afternoon, everyone. I'm inaugurating hearing number 20, the final hearing of this 185th period of sessions of the commission entitled The Situation of Religious Freedom in the Region. It was requested by a series of organizations, platforms, and observatories. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcon. I am the president of the commission, and I am joined by the second vice president, Commissioner McCulloch, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemary and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. We also have the Executive Secretary, Tania Renault, and the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca. I would like to greet the civil society and all the organizations for being here and, for, and to thank them for the information they will be presenting. The civil society will start with 40 minutes, then the Commission will have 20 minutes to speak, and finally, we will wrap up with another 20 minutes for the civil society. So you have the floor now for 40 minutes. Thank you. So Anidarga will, will speak, right? Or Denis Petri? Oh, yes, yes, I can speak. Good afternoon, honorable commissioners and members of the other delegations. This is Dennis P. Petri representing the Observatory for Religious Freedom in Latin America and the International Institute for Religious Freedom. Both me and Ana Idagaga representing the um, li free liberties and pluralism of the legal um, Institute of the University of Savannah will discuss the freedom of expression within the framework of armed conflicts in the region. We are both also representing other uh, requesting parties as ADF International and Fundación Resiliencia Colombia. And we really appreciate the possibility of presenting on an issue that has, has gone uh, not has not been present in the discussion for human rights in the region. Religious leaders are at serious risk in our region. And as will be expressed by other delegations, those affectations are developed in different contexts. We will focus on the scenarios of organized crime and armed conflict that mean specific challenges and the information we will present uh, that can be found on the request we sent to the Commission will specifically discuss issues that took place in Argentina, Colombia, Salvador, Haiti, Honduras, and Mexico. But in other countries, these practices occur as well, of course. As the Honorable Commission will observe, the uh, violations of the rights of um, religious leaders affect their freedom of expression, their right to life and religious freedom individually and collectively. So um, in the context of armed conflicts or organized crime, religious freedoms, uh, or leaders, sorry, are seen as a threat or competition for the sustainability of illegal armed groups, which leads to intimidation and violence. The information we have gathered shows that when the activities of religious leaders is connected to the defense of human rights, in particular of the most vulnerable, which are usually indigenous peoples, or the defense of the environment, or the leadership of social programs or educationals to uh, protect children from drugs and violence so that they won't be recruited, many times forcefully recruited. And fourth, the participation in programs for community outreach and the fight against corruption networks that uh, protect uh, impunity. And all of that makes them more vulnerable because they are seen as agents who are a risk for criminal activities during the pandemic, the humanitarian crisis led to a rise in violence and as a consequence, religious leaders faced even higher risks. Thank you very much, Dennis. Good morning or good afternoon, honorable commissioners. Now we will discuss three 
categories of behaviors that are systematic against religious leaders in our region and that currently have high indexes of impunity in the uh, so justice systems of the states we are talking about. First of all, physical violence against religious leaders. I'm sorry, um, uh, Mr. Carmona, could you please uh, turn off your microphone? Thank you. Thank you, Ana. Uh, so we will discuss three categories. The first one is physical violence against religious leaders. Uh, and also from the public information. And it all says that it, the presence of criminal organizations who crash against um, the government, many religious leaders are forcefully disappeared. They face violence, threats, and murder. In January, between January 2020 and August 22, we have seen 74 for murders of religious leaders in the countries we've mentioned. So I'm going to show you a short video of the testimony of a family of one of these persons who was murdered. Let me, let me see if I can. Father Habakkuk, who was murdered. After the ceremony, he said goodbye. He was joined by two young men, right? And when they got to the van, they were intercepted. And the men, the boys, the, the boys tried to run and they killed them. And he tried to drive away. They told him to get off the van and when he was getting off the van they shot him at what time did the accident occur the incident occurred at 5 p.m and you heard about it when the following day it this occurred on saturday and we learned about it on sunday and they called us over the phone but no one wanted to say anything this is the mother of the victim they no, but we, they did, no one told us until the other day. And he went to the center and I got in there too. And when I heard, well, Honorable Commission, Honorable Commission this serious um, testimony um, is linked to other forms of violence. The second violation are the uh, violations are to the freedom of movement and residence because religious leaders are victims of forced exile, forced displacement, kidnapping. They have been taken for hostages and they are unable to move freely throughout the communities. So the physical violence against leaders and the persecution against them has meant that they are unable to uh, move around the community where the community is dominated by, the, by organized crime. For example, in Salvador or Colombia, communities have been exiled in the uh, most violent areas in Mexico or when they were trying to fight for the right to uh, the land of victims in Colombia and the limits to the uh, movement of uh, leaders and their um, and their uh, communities is restrained by uh, because by the by the organized crime uh, groups. They have also been robbed, store extorted, and also vandalized. They have even closed churches. One of the most uh, evident cases of these extortion cases that also had uh, physical violence are shown in Mexico, Haiti, and Honduras, among others, where drug traffickers, maras, and gangs are uh, asking religious leaders for money to allow them to go and work with the communities. And the leader of the armed groups is the one who decides whether they can go in or not. This is interfering with their right 
of religious freedom in all of its dimensions because they are hurdling the right to uh, practice the ideas of a certain religion and to the, the rights of people to choose their leaders, the right to congregate and the right of each congregation to open social or educational centers. And this is not just the human right they are restricting because they talk about, um, because we're talking about the multi-dependency of human rights. So other rights are affected as well. Freedom of expression, the right to life, to personal integrity, freedom of movement, freedom of residence. These are just some of them. And the seriousness of these facts and the high level of impunity make it fundamental for the inter-American system to make a pronouncement on this issue. So we urge this honorable commission to acknowledge leaders as a vulnerable group in uh, these areas, but also to implement measures to protect the human safety of leaders and their communities in order to uh, safeguard their human rights that are protected in the American Convention and Article 3 and 4 of the American Declaration. Furthermore, in many of these cases, states do not investigate the facts and do not prosecute those responsible in conformance to, to international standards. So we propose um, that a report is issued on the situation of religious leaders and uh, we also urge for the monitoring of the situation of uh, religious leaders in the region. And we would like to ask the commission and the rapporteurship on human rights defenders, the rapporteurship for um, uh, freedom of expression and the country rapporteurs to um, establish specific actions to document, prevent, investigate, and sanction human rights violations of religious leaders in this context. Honorable com convention, Commission, as it was said, religious freedom is a fundamental right to ensure democratic and pluralistic societies. So along to what you will hear from other organizations as a civil society and an academic sector, we urge the system to address this problem that has been invisibilized. We ask you to recognize the fundamental role uh, in the peace building of um, works of uh, religious freedoms. Also, there must be um, protection of the prosecution against uh, religious leaders and their communities. And we believe that this commission will give this problem the importance it deserves, and it will work to end the persecution these communities are facing. We trust that the commission will not remain silent. Thank you very much. Commissioners, colleagues of the civil society, we would like to greet you and to thank you for the possibility of sharing this hearing. My name is Nicolás Palnoto, and together with Jimene Calderón, we will be representing a number of organizations that are the Latin American and Caribbean Network, the Red Luck, um, the Regional and Popular Indigenous Council of Mexico, Coretas Derechos Humanos in, in Brazil, and the organization Odeco from Honduras. So for a start, we would like to say that Latin America suffers the process of uh, um, suffering of the religious with people that are identified with expressions beyond Catholicisms, other religions, Muslims religions, indigenous religions. We recognize that the diversification of religions represents the uh, positively the pluralization of religion, but we see the stigmatization in their development due to several phenomena, the lack of knowledge on the spiritual and religious work, the uh, prejudice present in the civil in the citizenship and the lack of legal uh, framework uh, on 
religious freedom and among other. There is a challenge in the recognition of different religious expressions that do not fit in these religions. This has an impact in the uh, attention to these expressions and the individuals of the communities that use them in the co co uh, political aspect. So we require advances that lead to the recognition of the indigenous and Afro communities together with other rights such as the collective property of indigenous communities recognized by the Inter-American Commission. How do we protect and warranty in the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights this process of religious um, freedom? The international human rights laws do not warranty the uh, religion itself, but it avoids from uh, the configuration of religion vertically and in a superior way. It's also excluded that the decentralized configuration of individuals and groups are hindered by a policy adopted by an authority, more specifically the right to freedom of conscience established in the convention warranties. Firstly, the right to change the religion and the beliefs and the right to keep them. The right to disseminate the religion in private or in public. And third, the right to equality and non-discrimination. We believe this right is central because out of them, the state have the obligation to control the groups that discriminate against other people, promote religious hate, and hinder the exercise of, of religious rights. And in relation to the protection of the beliefs of indigenous people, their works in the work of the Inter-American Commission that leads to the reading of Article 16 of the Convention that allows them to exert their rights and to uh, teach their traditions and ceremonies and to do them both privately and publicly, individually or collectively. So I will give the floor now to Ximene Calderon. Thank you. Having said that, we identify several fields where the vulneration of uh, religious plurality is shown. Firstly, we believe that it is presented in the instrumentalization of religious pre speech, where the stigmatization is fostered and the discrimination of other minority uh, minor uh, religion communities and in brazil we also see this or in nicaragua where the persecution to uh, different religious communities increased uh, by the state secondly we consider that the freedom is also attacked when people and organizations or social leaders defenders of human rights and of uh, democratic values face uh, threats and persecution by the authoritarian regimes. We should underscore the arrest of Edgar Parales in Nicaragua in 2021 and the withdrawal of the license of the TV channels and the obligation of the um, Archbishop of leaving the country due to the different threats against their lives. They were persecuted by because of their criticism against the government, uh, such as the decision to withdraw from the OAS and their uh, violation of human rights. They're also hate speech against indigenous religions and that which reflect flex the vulneration of the use of sacred territories and the increase of violence against these communities. This is evidenced in the dissemination by religious leaders against Afro or indigenous groups. There are also cases where indigenous people and African religions are subject to hate speech. 
and they are they say that they are going to free them of the spirit they have inside and these elements together with the influence they receive from le religious leaders from their communities for instance in june 2020 in guatemala where a group of people tortured and killed Domingo Shock, accusing him of um, being a witch and he had died. He was a doctor and he was a man scientist who studied the different medicinal plants and he provided services to the communities he visited. In the case of Brazil, the stigma against the religious people generates conflicts without religion. The religious fundamentalisms in that country increase the level of violence that the people affected by their religion or beliefs express. In 2019, 180 temples of Ubanda and Candomblé closed the two Afro descendant religions that are present in Brazil. Due to the threats their lead, leaders suffered. And in 20, 2003, this religion was uh, recognized as official, according to a, a report from the US in Haiti, representations of the Federation of Haiti. Only five of their archbishops have been recognized and some marriages are not considered valid uh, in the civil law. And it is also important to highlight the displacements of several indigenous communities of their sacred uh, areas since they are used as tourist, touristic areas and the restrictions imposed on these territories for the access of people. In the Brazilian Amazons, the granting of environmental licenses for several projects do not take into account the indigenous community. An example of this is a case of the indigenous peoples of Cudenia, where this territory was divided by a route which facilitated the access of the hunters to these indigenous lands. And these affected the relation of the indigenous people with the places they consider sacred. Therefore, we would like to make the following proposals, develop forums of dialogues for the mechanisms of identification of cases of vulneration of freedom, and together with the civil society, government, and experts in the religious fields. There are some mechanisms that already exist, for example, in the United Nations to produce a report in the field by the commission with guidelines to address this topic within the framework of the Inter-American System of Human Rights. Third, to create a rapporteurship on religious liberty and freedom to promote the analysis of uh, the uh, violation of the religious right and the address, uh, an intersectional addressing of these rights. Good afternoon, honorable members of the commission. This is a historical day and we are really thankful to the commission to have generated this first hearing dedicated to religious freedom in the region. We congratulate the commission for this step and we, you have our support. My name is Tomas Enriquez, and I am representative of ADF International. I am joined by the Argentinian Council for um, Religion Studies, the International Young Center, Conciencia for Libertad Religiosa, Prudencia Argentina. Honorable Commission, this hearing is happening at the same time one of the worst religious persecution is happening i refer to the urgent situation of the nicaraguan people and the catholic church and its leaders it's 
public are notorious that the Nicaraguan church is opposed to the violation of human rights on the government led by Daniel Ortega. The way in which these um, the religious people are called to give testimony and they have a public action. In the words of this commission, it's in this country report on Cuba, which quotes that the ethnic content can be turned to assess concrete phenomena in the political and social aspects and to guide the political life of a country. During 2022 and within this persecution, we have seen that the missionaries have been expelled from the country, Sagrado Corazón de Jesús, and the state closed all the uh, health uh, residents of these uh, orders. And when they asked why that was the case, and they said they were expelled from the country for feeding people. The people accused by the Ortegas regime, including Baez, who was also threatened by the government, Rolando Álvarez, Oscar Benavides, Tejerino, José Luis Díaz, Ugario, González, all of them are priests from Nicaragua and Sergio Cárdenas. We mentioned their names so that they are not forgotten because they are in prison in the Chipote Center and we don't know their conditions today. The closure of the health systems of the Catholic Church and the prohibition to carry out uh, faith acts in the country. The commission has been encouraging, but it's not enough. There is religious persecution and it has been to be condemned. These are systematic actions of harassment adopted by the Nicaraguan state against the Catholic Church and against its members due to their beliefs, which is reflected in their, in their conducts in the political and social area. We know the provision with where the uh, freedom of 45 people from Nicaraguan was uh, asked, but no religious leaders were uh, requested their freedom. We request the court to broaden this order. We need these people to these people's voice to be heard, and it is obvious if I see the, that these priests are persecuted due to address their due to the fact that they address their religious people. We have to be concerned by the existence of regulations in Mexico that violate freedom of. Uh, religion. Mario Ángel Flores, Ángel Espinosa de los Monteros uh, issued the reflection on the cultural period of their country and they called the people to vote on their convictions. The, a person from the Partido Morena imposed uh, litigation against them uh, on the electoral court of the country. The regulation we was violated was Article 134 of the Constitution. And the, it establishes a prohibition to criticize the laws of the country or to speak against political candidates, even if those candidates are hostile to the people of faith or their churches. This is discriminatory because it affects people due to their social condition. The Mexican Federation criminalizes the expression that wants to persuade citizens to vote against their country and to oppose the laws of the country and to turn a religious uh, act in a political act can be sanctioned. And this sanction is going to impose by the same government, which in this case is judge and 
also a party to the case. So honorable commission, I invite you to think how the situation in Nicaragua will be if these, um, if these laws are the same as in Mexico and the uh, society in Mexico lives under the threat that the government decides to open proceedings against them. There is a clear intimidatory effect in which the clergy members and their exercise of rights is not free. The situation in Mexico is one of the worst, but worst, but it's not the only one. There are also religious uh, or re laws against religion in El Salvador as well and Brazil. And in its country reporter on report in Nicaragua, this commission condemned a practice the same as the Mexican one that prohibited to criticize the laws of the state. And in that opportunity, the commission condemned this regulation relating to the defense of the different religion, religious people that they consider inherent to their religious condition. The commission contributed so that this regulation was uh, derogated from the Nicaraguan constitution. And we ask what you have already done to make the same efforts to take it from the constitution, Mexico, Costa Rica, El Salvador. Thank you very much. I will give the floor to Deborah Dayay. Thank you. My name is Deborah Ranieri. I am the leader of the organization in Argentina. We see with concern what has started in the region, especially in Argentina, the discrimination in the access to public offices due to the discrimination of people. In Rio Negro, in Argentina, the president of the Supreme Court of Justice of Rio Negro, Sergio Barotto, questioned the candidates on their beliefs sustaining that the religion of the candidates was an obstacle to observe judicial independence. And according to his words, he, for a judge, it's difficult to not depend on their religious beliefs. At the end of the proceeding, the candidate that was selected was not the best assessed one, but he was agnostic. Um, which is worse, there is a process of destitution against the judges Luis Rizzi and Javier Anzuati on in the capital of Buenos Aires due to the disagreement on their construal of right on a decision in particular. The judges imposed the maximum sentence policies possible to the victim, but on the uh, background of the case, she was pregnant on of five months. So, uh, so after this pregnancy, the um, girl that had, that had been born was born alive. The judges only ordered the matter to be investigated because life is protected since the conception and if there was no assistance to survival the, it, this is a homicide that cannot be left impugn and it's um the accusing parties request the judges to be destituted this is um harassment of these judges since their interpretation of rights does not escape what other just judges sustain in the matter, not only considering the freedom of thought, but also the independence of the justice that this same system has protected in the past. For all the reasons exposed, we request the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights to first to take down notes of this serious fact which were exposed to pronounce itself against the participation of the uh, religious church in Nicaragua and to request the Nicaraguan state to 
free all the priests that are detained so as to protect their integrity and their life and that the commission takes concrete actions such as the ones taken in the past to warranty the existence of regulations uh, in favor of the religions and to modify the regulations that criminalize the freedom of expression of the leaders of the religious aspects and to state that the the uh, beliefs in personal matters is extremely prohibited. Thank you. I think you're muted. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, if I may, Commissioners, uh, my name is Mr. Carmona. I'm the Executive Secretary of the Permanent Commission for Human Rights. As a permanent mission for human rights, we continuously report the serious violations for, against human rights in my country, Nicaragua. And there's an aspect that hasn't been uh, considered or condemned by the commission, and it's the violation of educational freedom for uh, prosecution's freedom that is happening in our country. Within the general framework of the attack against the civil society, on February 2022, the National Assembly of Nicaragua decreed the canceling of the uh, legal personhood that uh, um, there uh, uh, and the legal acts of five universities created and managed by non-state entities including the Catholic Church and that is relevant for the uh, Universidad Católica Agropecuaria and the Association of Parish Schools, among many other institutions. With the cancellation of the legal personhood of these um, entities, it was legally impossible to keep on managing these educational institutions that were sustained by the canceled entities. In the case of the university, there's, there was something else. The state of Nicaragua seized all of its, furnish, uh, its furnishings and buildings. And after, a week after canceling the legal personhood, the National Assembly passed a law stating or creating a national university, University Luis Francisco Luis Pineda, and nationalized the Catholic university, and then created a state university. Thus, they took an extra step in consolidating the uh, state's um, pressure on the uh, educational system and it canceled the freedom of education that allows peoples to choose their educational institutes, in particular, if they are not created by the state. Also canceling the legal personhood of the university and the association of school, of, um, of religious schools also meant the uh, closure of 13 institutes. Each of them attended about cared for about 400 children from the poorest sectors. About 5,000 students and their families have been deprived of their right to receive Catholic education. And uh, the church has been hindered in its right to um, exert its right to uh, religious education. Thank you. The case of Bolivia is very similar to the one that was just presented about Nicaragua. The state is acting uh, illegally in uh, closing educational institutions without respecting freedom to edu of education and religious 
freedom. This uh, started in 2010 with the Act of Education, by which the state of um, Bolivia decided it was the only one who would train teachers, both in the public and the private system. The law established that only um, state training institutes would be able to offer academic training programs. Applying this rule or this law, the state of Bolivia closed all non-state institutions in the country and affected uh, Catholic and Adventist institutions. And so far, the state of Bolivia has now prohibited the uh, creation of non-state institutions for um, educational training. After a decade of this law, we can affirm that this is an arbitrary measure that goes against the right to education and does not obey to any sort of pedagogical criterion. It is This is just a political attempt by the state to control the education of future generations. This law that monopolizes the training of teachers in Bolivia goes against Article 13 of the Protocol of San Salvador, since it denies parents' rights to choose their children's education and the freedom of private persons to establish and direct teaching institutions without that prohibition following human rights standards. As I will explain now, this restriction on educational freedom imposed by the law does not correspond to any legitimate objective. Sir, I, th your t is your, I think your time is up. You will have a second round where you will be able to continue to speak. Thank you very much. So we will lead, uh, We will go to the participation of the uh, Inter-American Commission. First, I will give the floor to Ms. McCauley. Thank you, Madam President. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, you have my sincerest thanks for attending today this afternoon and providing us with so much information about the, the lack of freedom of religion in our region of the Americas. Um, I, I had the honor uh, recently and before that uh, as well, to have several meetings with um, religious leaders and members of African religions in Brazil in former years, well, um, some in Colombia. And um, I learned a lot in, in, in those meetings. And in fact, as a result, we have had a, a, a meeting with Caritas Brazil. Um, we met the members at one of the, the meetings in Brazil recently in the last, I, I think it's two, it was two months ago. Uh, um, and um, we are working and planning to continue working together, discuss, discussing various issues and see how we can collaborate effectively in advancing the ideals of first religious uh, um, um, uh, freedom of religion and, and of expression and of environmental rights of these peoples and various other rights. So that was a very positive thing that will, came out of these, these meeting that I had in, in Brazil recently. Um, my meetings in Colombia did not result in anything so positive because it did not advance what we were aiming to, to, to get. But forgive my ignorance um, if, if I ask this, and um, we have spoken about uh, the priests of the Catholic um, religion, Roman Catholic religion, and I'm a member of that um, denomination um, who have been um, detained and who are in detention and whom you don't even know how they are because you haven't seen them and nobody has. And I wanted to ask about the Cardinal, uh, um, what has happened to him, uh, if anything. 
And secondly, I wanted to ask you whether it would not be an effective move of the commission for us to move from this first fantastic um, session with you to one in which we have civil society speaking on, on the issue and states present to answer and discuss in the same meeting. Because we are supposed to be addressing the states. They are the ones who are making, putting barriers up. And, and perhaps we can start and see how best we can get you and states uh, um, officials together in one meeting and see how far we can push the envelope uh, to achieve the, 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 the goal we all wish that we can get. Um, and I'm going to stop there so that uh, uh, my, my, I, my sister and brother commissioner can have the time to speak and also the special rapporteur on freedom of expression. Thank you. And of course, our president. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Rosemena, please. Commissioner Arosemena. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I was waiting for your uh, permission to speak. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to thank all the organizations for the opportunity to share this exchange of information with all of you. As a rapporteur for Mexico and Nicaragua, well, you have provided very specific information about the situation that call for uh, the members of for the members of different churches and religions. I would like to respectfully ask of you that in the information you sent to us, it would be great if you could send this information to the commission so that we can start our follow-up work on these aspects because on um, legislative aspect, you've been very specific in the dispositions the and the, what the Constitution say on this. And I think this all calls for a certain review from our part. So we can try to fan a communication uh, channel of the many we have for the development of our work. And with regards to Nicaragua, you have also pointed out the issue of provisional measures. So I would like to know if on this request for provisional measures by the commission to the Inter-American Court, did you include the names and last names of these persons? Because Um, I would like to know if they were included or not. Could you tell us if you think that we did not um, attend that uh, request you presented for the priests? I would like to uh, get some clarification on that because if something was not done, you know that you can request the commission to grant a provisional measure or to widen the provisional measure that was granted. Of course, the information you have presented in terms of impunity 
after violent facts, even killings, as was mentioned in the testimony we heard, we would like to have that detailed information and so that we can request information from the state on those situations so that we can know if there has been an investigation because we need to analyze all this in detail with our technical team so as to act in what you have requested. Uh, I really appreciate all the information you have presented. It is necessary to acknowledge the freedom of religion and even the right not to have a religion, right? The issue of a person's dignity. So I think we can work together. I think that's what all of you have expressed, how important it is for you. I mean, the role of the Inter-American Commission on this aspect. So that is all, Commissioner. Thank you. Now I will give the floor to Commissioner Bernal. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would also like to start by thanking the members of the civil society who have requested this hearing. I would like to congratulate you on uh, your bravery by publicly denouncing all of these events. Thank you so much for giving us the information and not only the information about these violations because we already had them because they appear on the media, but also you have shared ideas to improve our work, the work of the commission so the commission can play a more active role in this area where I think there's a lot to be done. And also uh, in thinking of solutions. So with that in mind, with trying to think of more solutions and improving the inter-American standards, I would like to ask two specific questions to Ms. Hidarga and three questions to Mr. Enriquez and one specific question to Ms. Ranieri. For Ms. Hidarga, I have taken note of what you said on your intervention and you said you have proposed to consider religious leaders as a vulnerable group. I would like to know what that would entail. Secondly, you have mentioned something that wasn't on my radar. You have talked about uh, persecution of religious speech. I don't know if you could uh, tell, tell us a bit about that as well. And then to Mr. Henriquez, I would like to ask something similar, not what the persecution is about on um, religious speech, but you said that in Nicaragua, there's a phenomenon not of political really, um, persecution, but religious persecution. So I would like you to shed some light on that. Also, I would like to know, since I found this very interesting because I uh, I specialize in constitutional law, do you believe that the Constitution, the Article 130 of the Mexican Constitution goes against the Convention? And do you think that the article and its implementation violate inter-American standards? And finally, I'm interested in what you said about the intimidation suffered by religious leaders in Mexico. Do you think that effect could be compared to the uh, chilling effect suffered by journalists in regimes that violate freedom of expression? And finally, for Ms. Ranieri, I would like to ask you, how do you think the commission could act to stop and prevent, because you were talking about the idea of uh, religious persecution uh, in Argentina. So that's uh, what I would like to know from the civil society. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I would also like to thank your participation and the information you're providing to us. I have some comments. First, 
The Inter-American Commission is preparing a report on this topic, which was requested by the OAS, and this is within the work of the Commission. So all these inputs will be really useful for the cases. This report will gather the Inter-American standards that are the guidelines of the uh, Commission's work. Um, I would like to state something on the precautionary measures. These are requested and one of the requirements as the beneficiaries are there and not all of, of the commissioners agree and this is important for me to state that. And secondly, the commission can only request this when the file contains information that was already requested and that we request once more, as the report reporter was saying, because I am concerned by the idea that the commission did not ask to request this, but we need the beneficiary to be an agreement. And in other cases, the commission has requested information. We reiterate these requests and the commission has been precise and clear in this aspect. I have not heard this here, but I also I am also a reporter for topics of truth and justice. And there is a great history of that were killed in dictatorships. There are also positions that did not respect human rights, but many members of the Catholic Church or Evangelist Church were, were um, killed during dictatorship, but also in armed conflicts in Peru, for instance. Priests that were killed and I wanted to know whether you have that information because it would be very useful in this report of freedom of religion, Jimeni Calderosi, when she spoke about the religious actions, because many of these religious actions is in support of the communities and they have received retaliation. retaliation. And so if you had information on this topic, on standards of uh, serious violation of human rights and this would be very interesting for the commission i would also pose an a concrete question if the religious women in, in, in members of community relations whether you know if they have been threatened or if they have received gender uh, violence if you had that those data it would be interesting for you to share it and to miss that if you when you tell us about the situation in bolivia the closure of non-state entities i would like to, you to say whether if it's all those non state entities or if just a religious one. I would like to ask the executive secretary whether she has questions and then I would like to give the floor to Pedro Vaca, the, the reporter. No, thank you, I have no questions. Then reporter, I give you the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to read the commission and to all the people who request this hearing. I believe this is a hearing where very important and valuable information has been exposed. Uh, the inter-American system has said that the religious speech makes, uh, makes up identity. That is why it is given a very important level of protect protection. And this has been said in the report of the Rapporteurship for Freedom of Expression. The religious persecution to religious leader has been a very important topic in the agenda of memory, truth and justice, because there are works of several organizations that in practice are also exercise of human rights when there are violations of human rights the religious environments are generally a synonym of refuge, of shelter. So the aggressions to the religious leaders can have an impact in the protection of human rights of those who 
uh, practice that religion and in the population in general that is why it's interesting that in this hearing the um, violations uh, in Nicaragua uh, are very important in the inter-American system in several sentences against Ecuador speaks about the differentiated impact of uh, religious freedom in indigenous communities and this is a conversation where pluralism is key I would like to make a question in those who speak about religious freedom and non-discrimination, which are two rights that are reinforced. And in the inter international framework, there is an intersection of these two rights that I believe is very important. An aspect in order to contrast information you have in our monitoring, we have seen that in Nicaragua, there have been retaliation in uh, media outlet in local cities. And I would like to ask whether you have information on the ability or the capacity of the use of radio and television and if beyond the Nicaraguan case that we have documented, if we believe that this can be an instance of restriction on imposed on the freedom of religion. Thank you. I will give the floor back to the civil society during, during 20 minutes. So go ahead. Perfecto. Muchas gracias a la Honorable Comisión. Thank you to the Honorable Commission for their um, willingness to hear us and to give an answer to the topics that were presented today. What we try to do with the whole organizations represented here, we want to give more visibility, give more visibility to the dimension of the violation of religion freedom, which is not well known. When we speak about religion, we generally think of the relation of the church and the state, but this goes beyond that. What that is what we have tried to make evident this afternoon and in the case at hand i would like to highlight the link between uh, religious freedom and organized crime because we have already said that there is the religious persecution of religious groups but the same applies to the context of organized crime, as we have already said. And we see that this goes beyond human rights. This is something that has to do with human safety, where activists for justice, activists for human rights in general at large, they suffer retaliation uh, due to organized crime. And this is very addressed or focused on the leaders of religious groups. So I would like to highlight these. And sometimes the problem of organized crime with religious crimes, religious groups does not have to do with the identity itself, but with its conduct or the their acts, their active actions in the society. And there were actions that we have documented and we can share with you. I will give the floor now to my colleague Anna. Thank you. On the sake of brevity, I will address the questions posed by Commissioner Bernal, and I will make a comment by a question regarding the question posed by Commissioner Mantilla. As to the, the Convention on Human Rights determined that the religion is a suspectful uh, criteria in terms of uh, discrimination. And we see that the focus is on the activities of physical violence and the more apparent violations on religious freedom, but it's leaving, it's leaving aside violations that are initial violations and that can um, 
give way to more serious scenarios. We evidence a hidden discrimination of religious speeches, and it is important to take into consideration that outside of the physical violence scenarios, which are the most evident, in the judiciary in Mexico, for instance, there is a hidden discrimination against religious speeches and there are laws that discriminate and give a differentiated treatment to those people that have a religious discourse that may be uncomfortable for the state bodies or agencies and this creates a lot of concern because as other organizations were stating if the, there is um, legality in those rules, then it's difficult to go against them. And generally, these are groups that require the acting by the state in order to warrant their safety and in order to close. I would like to bring to your knowledge a case that uh, complied with all the admissibility uh, criteria that was not opened in the commission. It was a case of Tania La Luna, no, Luna. I also related with the comment of Commissioner Mantilla because it's a woman, a political leader who in the framework of this hidden discrimination has, give, has been given a differentiated treatment even within the commission. Thank you. To continue with what Jimene commented, I am Romel Gonzalez and we put forward the following. We consider relevant that the commission reflect on the advances of the inter-American system to warranty the religious freedom and to have into consideration the following aspect, to make emphasis in the spiritual aspect rather than the religion the right to life requires a, a very broad protection we need a, a, a thorough study because this has become a tool to promote political agenda and the situation becomes worse when this is in context of political violence the lack of protection to religious groups and the protection by the authorities is a factor that exacerbates violence when these groups facing the lack of warranties and in many cases they are of religious origins and they destroy flags or territories that they consider sacred we uh, vindicate the right of indigenous peoples uh, to religion. And I will give now the floor to my colleague, Mari. Thank you. Thank you, Romel. Following to what was said, we would also underscore the role, that the role of the state in the region in the protection of the religious groups, indigenous group, requires a commitment in order to comply with their obligations and human rights, especially in situation of political crisis and conflict, to avoid to take measures that limit the rights of the groups historically vulnerable, especially in context of extended violence to warranty with concrete measures the non-discrimination of religious and, Afro and indigenous groups promote the right to religious freedom, which includes safeguarding the physical uh, freedom and the freedom of culture and to combat uh, systemic racism. Also the access to public spaces for the exercise of freedom of religious freedom must be a commitment by the state and the society the intimidations and the hate speech restrict the practice, the beliefs, 
um, makes the situation of the groups more vulnerable and threatens democracy. We would also like to mention on the, uh, the question of Commissioner Margaret on Nicaragua. We would like to say that they continue to be detained and the people who are with them are also in prison. Cecilio Vardas is in exile in the US. We would also like to say that we are committed to send material and important information to the commission on the questions and comments posed by the commissioners in this space, especially under the intersection on gender with religious freedom and other elements that were highlighted in this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, members of the commission. Responding directly to uh, Commissioner Margaret May McCauley, thankfully, Cardinal Brennis uh, is okay. He is safe. He has not been detained. And uh, that, that is the situation right now in Nicaragua. To your other comment, we would very much appreciate the opportunity to get together with the states. Uh, the situation in Mexico is particularly grave as it is uh, becoming grimmer by the day. There are continuous threats and a chilling effect. And I'm going to connect this with what uh, Commissioner Bernal said. Uh, and that is something that we would very much appreciate. Para responder al comentario de la comisionada Esmeralda Rosemena de Troitiño. To answer to the comment of Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena de, de Troitiño, we would like to share all the information we gathered, taking into consideration the regulation in Mexico that exists in this matter. And we are undoubtedly convinced that it's against the standards uh, on freedom of protect of expression and freedom of religion. I would also like to add the following. Um, we have not included information on the priests in the petition that was done before the court. And we thank you for this clarification, but we would be grateful to provide you with this information with the objective that, uh, with the purpose of uh, broadening the measures as to the questions posed by Commissioner Bernal as to the concept of persecution. We believe it is important to highlight that the persecution that is being taken in place, is taking place in Nicaragua, it's not one or the other. I believe it's both at the same time. This is what is happening in this case. There is a systematic harassment. I think that the commission itself and the OIS have observed that the Nicaraguan state is adopting against the uh, church, but also against its individuals because it's this practice that have, um, taken these priests to, to talk and to act in public and the reason why they are detained, the fact that Ortega sees the Catholic Church as a leader in the opposition does not alter the differentiated impact. And I believe that this is evidence in the fact that today it is a government in Nicaragua that, in, in that prevents the realization of acts in the temples. Secondly, in as to the comments on if the, the article 130 of the Mexican constitution is against human rights, the, uh, the answer is no. And it's not my opinion on the matter, it's the opinion on the commission. The same provisions contained in the uh, constitution in Nicaragua, and they were condemned. The fact that in Mexico today, the freedom of expression is condemned and it is linked to freedom of expression because this is a vehicle for the exercise of the free exercise of freedom of religion. We believe that this is a very important case of a violation of religion, of speech, of, free, of religion. And I think this is connected with the third question, Commissioner, the 
chilling effect is real. The intimidation effect is present, and I believe that Commissioner Arosemena knows it. In practice, the, the practice of the president of Mexico that carries out his interview in which he directly confronts the, Me the religious Catholic, Catholic organizations and he knows that it is possible to cancel their personhood is this is intimidatory and it is comparable to the phenomenon of the chilling effect that this produces in journalists as well and to finish and to hand in the word to my colleagues in bolivia to answer to the comment of president mandilla Having taken contact with the nuns that were expelled from the country, there have not been uh, threats of sexual violence against uh, them. But and we thank you for this. But and this is important information as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, for your question, because it allows me to finish with my presentation. The prohibition that establishes the law from 2010 in Bolivia means that uh, back then it closed these two religious institutes, the Catholic one and the Adventist one. That is why we wanted to say that this prohibition applies to any civil society organization, a civil, any civil society. Uh, organization that wishes to open a non-religious uh, training center would be affected by this ban as well, because it affects any uh, attempt to, um, I mean, any it, this bans any attempt to create uh, training institutions. This affects society's plurality. It doesn't just have to do with the Catholic Church and the Adventist Church. This is a clear attempt to control thought in the long term, of course, because controlling the education of the teachers that will be educating the next generations has a big effect on, in the long term, of um, unifying thought in our country. That is why we believe this is so serious. Thank you. Okay, uh, in answering Commissioner Bernal's question, in Argentina, we are particularly concerned for this uh, practice that we have been seeing in the judiciary, as I have expressed in these two specific cases. I have heard that several organizations have sent the Inter-American Commission the uh, story and the details about the uh, minor defendants who were discriminated against because they are believers. And we believe that the commission, as such an important institution, can do something about this in order to inform the state of Argentina about this practice. These cases are very concerning because on the one hand, they are becoming more and more common. They appear on the media, this case, uh, I, we just talked about appeared on a provincial newspaper and many associations in Argentina have presented um, cases to defend these two judges who just because they are believers, they were attacked by an association. And right now their position as judges is at risk. So we openly urge the commission so that using its tools, uh, does something in Argentina in particular, because we are terribly concerned about this. And once the damage is done, it's too late if this uh, finally reaches the Inter-American Court. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. It's my first time here, and we are at your disposal if you need more, inf more information. Thank you. You have two and a half minutes still. Mr. Navarro, I think. Yes, if I may, Madam President, I'll keep it short. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. As Dr. As Ms. Ranieri said, the uh, Argentine Council for Religious Freedoms did send um, a notification to the commission because there's a double violation of religious freedom. First, because the um, candidates were 
interrogated about their religious beliefs. And secondly, because those who expressed were believers were discriminated against. And finally, one more thing after your comments, Madam President, I would just like to say that in Argentina, the Catholic Church has uh, sanctified a bishop who was murdered in, during our dictatorship and three um, of his assistants, Mr. Um, Monsignor Angelelli, because he was a human rights defender during the dictatorship. So what you were saying is totally true. Thank you very much. You have one more minute if you wish to speak. Um, George Velarde, would you like uh, to finish with what you were saying about Bolivia? Yes, thank you. Once again, the final part. Um, I would like to remind you all that this case, I mean, in this case, the Commission has already set a precedent we believe is very important during the 1980s. The Commission stated on the Cuban case, which was a similar case in which the government was monopolizing education. So I wanted to point that out. There is a precedent here, the Cuban case, that allows us to take action on the Bolivian case. Okay, you, Mr. Carmona, you have one last minute. As part of the CPDH, we would like to thank you for the time you have given us and the attention you have always given us uh, to those in Nicaragua. We are very concerned, of course, because this dictatorship, Ortega's <clears throat> dictatorship, uh, their dictatorship have shut down religious and opposing um, voices. So we believe that our leaders are being uh, imprisoned, they are being threatened, they are being persecuted. And we believe that more and more priests will have to go into exile because we know for a fact that many of them are afraid to be imprisoned. They have called us to tell us so. So we really appreciate the fact that the commission is paying us attention as it always has. And we hope to keep on documenting all these heinous acts we are suffering in Nicaragua. Thank you so much. This is, it's almost time, but Gina, you have one minute because I think it's very important to listen to you. Thank you so much, Madam President and everyone here. I would just like to say, once again, it is necessary for the Commission to move forward on a legal approach in the defense of the human rights of spiritual plurality. I think that would allow us to move in the defense of Afro and indigenous spiritual groups because they have not they are not really represented and one final thing uh, we will be sending you a document on memory i'm i'm really sorry but uh technologically uh, we cannot keep on speaking because uh the um session will close on us. So we will close this hearing and this 185th period of sessions. I think it's very important to close the session with a period with this hearing. I would like to thank you for this exchange, for the work you do. I would also like to thank you for the respectful um, dialogue we have had. There was a case in particular that was mentioned from Mexico. The report was published because there are requirements to vote on the petitions. And one of the requirements is the exhaustion of the domestic remedies. I don't wanna uh, elaborate on this right now, but I would just like to say that we're talking about different dimensions here, right? I think Dennis was telling us about the different dimensions we have heard about, the content, the freedom. There is so much we need to work on. And I wanted to 
remind us of a recent statement by the special rapporteurs of the UN on religious freedom. And they said that we believe that the international framework on international, sorry, of human rights that are at the base of all religions are interdependent because they seek to protect the equality of all human be uh, human beings and guide persons in their search of freedom and happiness so that everyone can live in equality and freedom. And I would like to repeat this statement because I think it's the guiding principle of this particular topic, but also the work of the Inter-American Commission. Thank you so much for everything you have shared here. We are at your disposal. The rapporteur is here. The Redesca rapporteur is here as well. All of the commissioners with all our different mandates. Tomas, thank you so much on the information on the religious sisters. We are paying attention to this issue because there's. we know that there sometimes there's particular aggression against women. The issue of memory and truth. What Juan was saying, Juan Navarro was saying, what so many persons have suffered for defending human rights through their religious work. And I would also like to close these hearings uh, thanking with all my heart the team of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. First of all, each of my colleagues who are here and everyone who attended all the hearings, the interpreters who make it possible for us to have these hearings in different languages and they continue to do this 24-7 and they have to deal. I will uh, talk about me because they are dealing with a president who speaks very fast and they have to speak into English. I know that um, the same happens with some colleagues from Chile. I would also like to thank the team of the Executive Secretariat, uh, Mr. Jorge Mesa, Secretary Pulido, Ms. Renom, the Cabinet, Luciana, Lorena, Camila, Astrid, who has been working with us. I don't want to forget about anyone. I'm sorry if I do. Our focal points, Talia, who's here, Lucia, but uh, in particular, I would like to say that this was a very difficult month for the Inter-American Commission. Um, I would like to remember our dear colleague, Mario Lopez, who passed away recently and left us in huge pain. And also this month, we lost our dear former um, colleague in the commission and in the human rights fight, Elizabeth Amnes. So I would like to publicly appreciate the work of the team of the commission because to get to these hearings, they need to do so much work. And that team has had to move on with that pain, with that uh, grief. And the, the best homage we can pay the, to uh, Elizabeth and Mario is keep on fighting for human rights. This commission and this president in particular, uh, but all the forecoming presidents as well, will always have the highest respect for diversity, for exchange, for dialogue, for uh, freedom of belief and for the ability to listen to each other, fighting for human dignity and for happiness, as I mentioned on that statement from the UN. I think that's what we all share. Thank you so much, everyone, team, commissioners, Esmeralda, uh, Commissioner Margaret, my dear uh, Margaret, Commissioner Bernal, Pedro Vaca, thank you so much. I will close now this hearing and the 185th period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.